Hello and welcome back to the E2 tutorial series and in this video I want to look at the layout of the advanced application template. Now this template causes people quite a lot of confusion especially if you've come from Yi 1.1 and you're used to a fairly flat, fairly simple um, structure for your web applications. But in the E2 advanced template, there are a couple of concepts that, although they're quite simple, when you first meet them, they look they are, they are quite confusing. And so I want to go through um, those things now. So what I've done so far is uh, I've installed the E2 um, advanced application template, and I've also opened up the basic template below just so we can do some comparisons. And so far, all I've really done is uh, installed this. I've run the init command to select an environment, and we will look at environments in a minute. And I've ended up with uh, this setup with not really very many changes. And what you'll notice is we have a back end and a front end directory. Now, you can call these whatever you like. Um, so the, the idea of this is that in many web applications, you will have a public view to your web application and you will have a private view and some of the things will be common to both the public and the private area and obviously other controllers other views will be specific just to one or the other so I've now set up a local website for this folder and this folder and I've called them front.advance.local and back.advance.local and you'll notice that the back end, if I delete this root, by default requires a login. So that very front page for the back end is restricted and requires the user um, to type something in here. The front of the public site, on the other hand, is just uh, the usual congratulations page. And if we look back at the template, really we just have two copies of a web folder so we have one index in there for the back end and one in there for the front end um, these are actually fairly similar in this case because they don't do very much but um, i just want to compare quickly with the basic template and if we scroll down here and look at the basic template it looks like the basic template has more folders in it but the reason for that is that some of these folders, which in the basic template, you only have one of those folders. In the advanced template, you have one under backend, like assets, and one under front end. Config has its own config, controllers, models, runtime, etc. Um, and the same in the common area. It's up to you um, what folders you add under here, but you can have common configuration. Uh, common models so the template by default puts user and login form as a common model so that can be used by the back end and by the front end websites and i've got an example i'll show you in a minute where we can even share a controller if we want to do that and again we've got the shared configuration and when we look at environments we'll discuss uh, all of these different files and why there are so many of them um, and why that's so confusing so really we have a back end and a front end and the basic idea is essentially to share things as I mentioned earlier. So let's have a look for instance at um, the user model. So under common models we have a user. Now why is this under common? Well because probably the same type of user that we're going to have on the front end will be used on the back end. This is effectively the login user. It's um, the person who logs in with the password. And so in this case, it makes sense that that model is common to both sides. Now, it doesn't have to be. We could create one in here and a different one in here under this models directory if we wanted to. Um, and maybe would make, make them slightly different. That's, that's possible. But in the case of user, they've decided um, that they're just going to have a common one. So what does that mean when we use it? Well, here, this is the sign up form. So if we go back to our website, um, that is this form here. And the sign up form uses the uh, user model um, to log in with. And you'll notice here that even though the namespace of this view, um, sorry, this model 
is front end models so this is under here if we scroll down a bit we can see it this is our sign up form so even though this is under front end you'll see that by using a namespace declaration that we're saying that we're going to use the user underneath common models now we could also have a user on the front end and they could both be called user and the reason why the namespace is useful is we can specify exactly which one we're talking about um, and you'll see further off down here that the user is created populated with the relevant information and saved down here so using a common model is hopefully fairly obvious um, and uh, quite a common thing that, that you would want to do. But let's also look at a slightly different scenario because it is possible, uh, although maybe less often, that you would want to share a controller. So imagine, for instance, that you have a shop and in your shop you, uh, can, you can order parts. Now, in the front end, you might have a, a part search screen and it might use a part search controller. Um, and in the back end, it might use exactly the same thing. And so rather than copying the same controller, you might think, let's just create a common controller and use that um, on both uh, both ends of it, on the front end and the, on the back end. So in that case, it's fairly straightforward. Creating a controller here is um, the same as any other controller. So it extends ye web controller in this case. Uh, the namespace is common rather than front end or back end. So again, that just matches the normal directory structure, which means the auto loader will work correctly. Um, and in this case, I've created a shared controller and I've just put a single um, action in it. And you'll notice this interesting syntax. So this is a way of specifying a view that doesn't live under the normal domain for the front end and back end. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you've probably already learned that Yi automatically looks in certain areas for certain things. So if I look at the site controller, when I do something like this and render index, Yi will automatically look under the same um, module, in this case the front end. It will then look under the views, it will look under the name of the controller, which is site, and it will look for that um, name index. Now, clearly, we can't use that syntax if we're trying to pull in a view from another area of the application. So we have to use a fully qualified path. And so in the shared controller, even though we're under the common namespace ourselves, we explicitly specify that the view that we want is also under common views shared index. And again, we can see that it's nothing special. It's under here, shared index. And this is pretty much a copy of the normal front page. So it's pretty much a copy of this, but I've changed the text just so we know it's the shared one. And um, other than that, it's exactly the same. There's nothing particularly special in there. It uses the same um, base class view because it doesn't do, uh, there's no form on here. So th there's no binding to a model or anything like that. Um, so this is all fairly straightforward. Um, and the only other thing that's important is clearly this controller lives outside of the front end. So how does the front end know to go and look in this common area? Because remember that the routes are actually mapped automatically by Yi. And although you can override that, it would be nice if it worked automatically. And the good news is it does if you set it up correctly. So if I look at my configuration here, you will see that there's a controller namespace. So that tells the Yi autoloader where to look for the controllers that it, it um, decides to use in the URL manager. But I've added in this other very useful um, array, which is called the controller map. So that says if you're looking for a controller called this, then go and look for this class. And this is where I give Yi the ability to go into a different directory completely and say go into common in the controllers directory and pull out shared controller. And if I ever reference shared in one of my routes, then this is the controller that I want to invoke. So that's all set up and coded. So if I go back to the site here, this is on the front end, remember. So if I add the root in here, um, shared index. So I haven't got the pretty URLs turned on, but that's just a normal syntax for a root. 
and I press return, you'll see it goes to this shared view. So what that's done is it said, I'm looking for a controller called shared and an action called index. And it said, oh, but I've got a mapping for that. So I need to go into the common controllers, shared controller. And then once I've gone in there, I'm going to call the, oh, not that one, common controllers, shared controller. I'm going to call the index action. And this is going to render the view that's found under common views. So the front end and back end stuff uh, shouldn't be too tricky. You've got a common, um, but other than that, these all work exactly as you'd expect them to. They all have controllers, models, and views in them, which will work in exactly the same way as if you're using the basic. Um, just the difference is by default, um, the back end can only see things in the back end. The front end can only see things in the front end. Models are, are very easy to share because you pull them in just with a namespace. Um, but if you want to do anything more um, complicated, then you need to use one of those um, controller maps. So that's really all that needs to be said. There's one other little trick that it mentions on the YI framework uh, on the guide page. And that is what happens if you're working in the back end, but for instance, you might want a, a link that says, what does this page look like on the front end or something like that. And clearly you can only, you only normally have one URL manager. So what they say here is if you, if you need to create links from the back end to the front end, then effectively you copy the front end's config, um, URL manager configuration and you paste it into your back end, but you give it a different name. So in this case, they call it URL manager front end. And then by doing that, you can then reference URL manager front end in order to create your URLs. So you can find that fairly easily. This is under the advanced application template uh, instructions if you're interested in that. So that's the first half. That's hopefully fairly easy to understand. The second part, which was very confusing to me when I first saw it, was I saw all these loads and loads of configuration directories you know, all over the place. And under environments, you'd have dev. And then under dev, you'd have backend, you'd have config there and common config here. And it all was very, very confusing. Um, and of course, the, the, the obvious question, if you're new to Yi2 is, which of these files am I supposed to change? Um, you know, when am I supposed to change them? How am I supposed to change them? Um, and although it looks quite complicated, the reasoning behind these environments is quite simple. Um, and if you've ever worked in a development team, then you probably already realized that configuration is not only different um, for development and production, but very often it will be different between different developers. So maybe your database connection string is going to be different than your uh, development team members uh, database connection string. Maybe your testing department has a different database. Maybe you have pre-acceptance test or integration test or user acceptance test or pre-delivery test or, or whatever. All of these different environments that all require different configuration. And what Yi2 has decided to do is create something. It's really quite, quite simple. And that's why it looks like there's a lot of files because it's a, a very clunky mechanism, um, but it works easily enough. And when you first installed Yi, if you've used the advanced template, you'll remember that one of your instructions that you're given is to run this init. Um, it's actually a PHP script. If you run it in Windows, it runs a batch file. Um, and when you run init, it basically says, which environment do you want to initialize? Do you want development or do you want production? Um, and you can say either of them. So let's have a quick look at the website. You'll notice at the minute, I have the debug toolbar at the bottom of the page. And that's because I'm running currently in debug mode. So if I say, actually, I want to set this up now for production, and it will say, do you want to do that? And I'll say yes, and I'll just, I'll overwrite everything. Okay, and what's actually happened here, although it looks quite confusing, it's done a couple of things. It's copied a load of files, which we'll look at in a second. It's overwritten the main um, index PHPs and um, E applications in the root. It's set this cookie validation key, um, and because that always changes, because it's a randomly generated string, these files will always um, want to be overwritten, which is fine. 
And then in this case, it makes sure that the assets and the runtime directories are writable. And that's just a convenience. If you set those manually, then obviously your, your site will work, but this script decides to do it for you just to make it a bit easier. So if I now go back to this page and I refresh that page, you'll notice that the debug window has gone away. And the reason the debug window has gone away is if I go back to here, um, we were looking at the front end, so we'll collapse those. If we look at the front end and we go into index.php in here, we'll notice that ye debug is set to false. And we'll see that the environment is set to production. Um, and you'll, um, you'll then notice that if we go back to, not here, but here, if we run that again, and this time we say we want to go back to development, yes, and we overwrite everything again. If we go back and open that again, you'll see now that the debug set to true and the environment set to dev. And those are the things that make the uh, debug window come up at the bottom of here um, when we're running it in, in, uh, in development. Now, you might be thinking, you're, yeah, but what's actually happening here? And the simple answer is all that's happening when you run in it is it's copying various files from these directories, depending on whether you choose development or production. So let's have a look at development. So if you look here, front end web, when you run and say that you want to go into dev, it quite literally copies this file and overwrites the file that's under front end. Um, now that's really important because if you change this file in front end and then run this again, you will potentially lose your changes if you're not careful. It will ask you when you run it whether you want to overwrite them, but you could very easily over, um, overwrite this file with the one from here. So you need to be a little bit careful, um, but index.php, you're probably not gonna change that. These are the only two lines that are kind of important for index. But let's look at some of the others. The other thing that's important here is you get a lot of configuration that's copied over. Now, what we should say straight away is you might not actually be using any of these. You might not be using the, the console at all. So again, you might or might not be interested in, in any of this stuff in here. The parameters are empty by default as they are in, in most of these. Um, so again, there's different um, different information in each of these. But what you get to do is you get to say, when I'm running in development, my back end uses this configuration, whatever it might be. So anything that's in your normal configuration could be in here, your database, your URL manager settings, anything that's relevant to the back end in the development environment. Um, we'll go into one of these two files. And parameters are things like um, uh, key value pairs, basically. So I think there are some um, under some of these. I'll show you an example. Um, so yeah, so the admin email key value pair as an example of what you might have in params. So you can add all of these different configuration for the different environments. Now, what's really, really important here, and this is kind of the most important bit, is you'll notice that all of these files have dash local on the end of them. So when they get copied into here, um, so for instance, the backend config files there and there, when you run dev on the init application, they will overwrite that file and that file. So this file is still there and won't get changed. That file is still there and won't get changed, but these files will be added in. Now the key thing here, if you look at git ignore, it tells you, it tells Git in this case not to put the, the files that have the word local in into um, source control. And the reason is it's saying these parameter files are local. They're only relevant for uh, this person on this machine. And don't um, put them into source control because when we go onto another machine and we check out the code, we're going to have our own versions of these local files and we're going to modify them differently. So that's the, the basic idea of, um, of main local, of params local, is there the uncontrolled files that allow you to, to overwrite stuff. So that's one important thing. Don't check local files into source control. The next question is, well, well why are there so many configurations? Well, if we look at index.php, we can see the answer very easily. What happens is it pulls in the main configuration and then it pulls in your local copy. In other words, anything 
that's in main and in main local, then the one in here will be overwritten by the one that's in here. So main local is more important than main.php. And the same, um, that's the common configuration. The same for the configuration in the back end. Anything that's in main local that's also in main will, will overwrite the one that's in here. So we probably haven't got anything in there at the minute, but let's say um, what we've got in here. So we have a cookie validation key. If I had a cookie validation key in here, in the request thing, then this one would overwrite the one in here because it's included second. So that's the order of the files that are checked in. Now, can we customize that and customize what happens when we run in it? Uh, the answer, unsurprisingly, is yes, because uh, Quang and the others seem to have thought of everything. If you go into this index file, you'll kind of see how it works. There's an array. The key of the array is the name of the environment. So when we run in it, let's run that again. You'll notice here that it says, do you want to run development or production? So actually we could put, if we wanted to, um, another one in here. Control copy, I'll just, we'll just do it to demonstrate it. Let's just call that um, maybe user acceptance or something like that. We'll leave all the paths the same. It's not going to check, check them anyway. Um, and we'll save that. So now if we go back to this and we quit and we run it again. You notice now that there's another entry. It says, which do you want, development, production or user acceptance? Um, obviously, with each of these, I've got a, I can decide whether I want to have another directory so I could create another folder here and I could call that um, UAT and I could set that to point to UAT um, all the rest of it um, and then you'll just see the uh, the different things you can set you can tell it which directories to make writable in this case unless you've changed the basic template you will always make those same four directories writable um, you can tell it which file to use as your executable which um, you'll find, uh, or is it the bottom here? Um, we I don't really know why you would change that, um, but that's basically the Yi um, application itself. Um, and then you've got um, a uh, an array that tells you where you want to set a cookie validation key. Um, so again, that tends to be those two files. Um, and you'll notice that um, what happens is anything that you include underneath these directories will basically get copied as is into the relevant directory. So if you wanted to, you could also add um, a PHP file. You could add a main.php um, and you could put some stuff in there. And what that would mean is every time anybody sets it to production, they will get that main configuration. And this one you would check into source control. Um, so the correct way really to set this up would be to put all of this um, into here um, and you could say right this is my production um, configuration um, and I want all of those to be copied um, over the top of all of these um, when I go into production but um, the other thing that's kind of important for um, to, to mention I guess is the, the last thing is that you don't have to use environments so although it tells you first of all to uh, to run the init tool and you should because it will make sure that your directories are writable and it will make sure that there's some configuration copied in once you've run that tool once you don't um, ever have to use it again if you're really not interested then just delete that folder the environments folder um, and then just maintain you could even delete the local files here if you want um, if, if you've only got one person developing and you don't need those separate local files, you could delete those as well. Um, and then just make all your changes um, directly in the configuration. But what's really, really important to remember is if you are using environments, remember that you need to make the changes um, in both in here, in the environments area, and in here, depending on which files you're changing. Because anything that's in here is going to overwrite anything in there when the init is run. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea of how these things work. Um, it's not too tricky, but it is a bit confusing when you first look at it. 
but once you start having a play um, you should find things are, are really quite straightforward um, they do work fairly well and there's lots of ways of customizing it um, and as I've said before um, you know look at the guide the um, the year 2 guide is, is really quite good it's got um, let's just pop there a second uh, it's really got a lot of articles about a lot of things so you know if you go into the forum and you ask a really easy question about a model that's already in the guide then people are either going to tell you just to go and look at the guide um, or they might not even answer your question so so look at the guides they are really useful if you're on the forum then you know make your question nice and clear don't ask a really 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 big question don't ask a really really confusing question you can do but the chances are it won't be answered because you know somebody's going to have to effectively do a lot of work just to try and answer your question but otherwise um you know pop over to the forums they are you know very friendly there's lots of stuff on here for you too um some of it's you know very very confusing some of it's um you know quite straightforward um and the other thing is don't be afraid to dip into the source code so you know people saying oh you know can i customize such and such a widget and it's like well you've got vendor you've got yeesoft you know you've got your bootstrap stuff you've got you know your widgets or whatever so if you've got a nav and you want to know whether you can configure something well just look through the code you'll find out where stuff is written um you know and then if you can find out where it's written find out whether it can be customizable and you'll find either a reference to a um, property which means you probably can customize it or maybe some things sometimes are just hard coded um, and you know then it's up to you to either subclass um, something and you know make it do what you want um, or just do something in a different way so don't be afraid to dig through the code it's all in there and at least if you can you know show that you've done some work before you ask a question then you're probably more more likely to get a useful answer on the forums um, but thanks very much anyway any questions as always um, any comments please uh, put them below the video and hopefully record another one soon